All right. Uh, thanks a lot for your guys uh, attending, and thanks for Sönke and the organizers to, to having me here. Um, now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Also, actually, I had a, a question for the, for the last speaker, because you see that I'm a little bit of a different scientist, and I do think that uh, these um, opportunities that the blockchain or distributed ledger technologies can bear fruition for scientists. And um, I think it's also a little bit different. Like in my country, uh, unfortunately, as a scientist, especially in applied sciences, where you have to make things, right? We need money from governments, from investors, and so on. So we actually cannot position ourselves as pure academics, at least not if you need money to pay people or you know, if you, if you just work on your own desk, uh, then, then it's a different situation. So I partnered with a couple of companies, actually, as an academic to create, like, or, or make a first step, this is by no means to, to be um, complete, into using digital ledger technologies for research and technology uh, development. And at the core of this is, is actually a matter of trust, right? When we connect the real world, real events in the real world, to the trusted blockchain, there is there's a gap in trust, and how can we handle that, and how can we make that into a business model? So I initiated a, a project with these partners, so Akasha, who I actually met at, uh, at one of the last events that Sunke uh, organized, a Dublin-based user experience company who is very successful, a uh, very successful startup. They have like 50 people working on user interfaces. My home university is Dublin City University, and I'm the director of a Fraunhofer Project Center at this university. So the project uh, termed DLT for RTD is about disruptive blockchain-based crowdsourcing instrument to seminally improve quality and speed of complex multidisciplinary research and technology development uh, initiatives. It's supposed to be a game-changing business model based on and that's very important to understand competitive paralyzation, I'll explain that a little bit later, for leveraging so far untapped best-in-class competences, skills, and facilities for the benefits of economy and societies. And the partners are already listed. They're all in Ireland because the funding uh, is to some extent from Ireland, so we unfortunately couldn't include any, any non-domestic uh, partners. So how does a normal linear, let's say, research and technology development uh, run? I did many of them, raised millions of money for that. Um, you have an initiator, an idea, you have a proposal business plan, you have funding investment, work packages where you have, have our hands and brains, uh, or depending on the type why is that not, uh, of research, infrastructure and equipment. And then you need to validate your results. That's often overlooked, and that's a key factor here. And then to exploit them, either through licensing them, so if you generate uh, patents or some know-how uh, to, to, to produce something, or as we all do, uh, publish, and, and then essentially get a reputation. That's usually what researchers do, and this is the chain that we go through. The problem is we usually do that with a static team, right? And that has practical confinements, whatever, for this project. It's also a project I had to go only for Irish partners because my investors only wanted to see Irish partners. But I'm sure, and there are very few Irish people in here, actually myself, I'm the only one probably. Uh, so there's much more intelligent skills and facilities out there to, to do that if you really want to do this in an optimum way. So. Classical RTD projects have major drawbacks in the sense they focus on in-house consortium-based or inter institutionalized RTD teams, right? This is the legacy, e essentially, economy of RTD. So that confines idea generation. It limits quality and speed of project delivery. It, it lacks credibility due to subjective bias validation. We often validate ourselves, more or less. Right, which is typically something you want to avoid in an objective process. You have lengthy negotiations with partners on remuneration, confidentiality, IP, and exploitation. Right, so these are the major drawbacks. So what is our disruptive approach? So we want to do highly efficient delivery of RTD projects requiring highly multidisciplinary expertise. So I work in life science engineering, which is kind of like a worst case thing, you know, where the, the um, kind of the difficulties of biology meet the precision of engineering and uh, the culture clash and so on that you have. 
and you need a wide range of technical resources. So I have bio labs, I have engineering labs, I have a certain uh, fluidic testing labs and, and some other engineering disciplines, electronics engineering, right? So there's nobody, also myself, I don't hold all the competences in these fields. Um, to leverage that for assembly enhancing the quality, speed, credibility, flexibility, cost and risk base and knowledge management in uh, these projects by crypto economically incentivizing paralyzed global crowdsourcing of competences, skills, infrastructure and equipment for contributing work, ideas, resources. Ideas is also very essential. Validation, arbitration, right? If there's conflicts and so on, you need mechanisms to resolve that. If somebody wants to be paid for something, you know, there's always a potential conflict. Administration, contracting and marketing and sales. All that could be leveraged essentially through fairly implemented blockchain technologies. And that, uh, in, in a real project, to run that ar around a lean core team. So the key success sources are trusted oracles. You know, how do we evaluate or rank outcomes of complex RTD tasks to embarrass expert crowd in an objectivized fashion? Let's say I put out a proposal, please help me on that computer simulation. You carry that one out, you know, and either you or me or we both are bad guys or ladies, right? And whatever, you deliver something that's cr that I find crap and is objectively crap, but you still want your money, and vice versa, you, you su submit something to me that's excellent, an outcome, or you make a little thing that I need, and I just, um, and, and I just say it's crap, but still use it, or, or just, and, and, and don't give you the money, right? That's, if you, if you have like a monetary kind of um, reward system, then it's always a conflict how to assess it fairly, right? Second thing is a fair distribution of incentives. You know, so we need a simple, transparent, and legally sound agreements, right? So we are talking about experts, right? So this is not like minimum wage, Amazon, Mechanical, Turk, or whatever that's called, uh, the kind of stuff we're talking about paying people like 100 euro or several hundred euro an hour potentially, right? So if, 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 if that leads to legal um, uh, issues, you know, and, and, and solicitors and so on are involved, you don't really want to do that, right? That would kind of kill your efficiency. And you need like optional barrier-free interfacing with real world fiat currencies, because if you involve people, and that's a, um, a concession essentially to the real world, a lot of your suppliers will not work with um, cryptocurrency because they need to pay their bills in real currencies. Right, their, 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 their employees will not accept Bitcoin, right? So we need to implement a mechanism that people can optionally, whatever, want their cryptocurrency, whatever we do there, or uh, get real world currencies, which is essentially like a financial management problem. It ne we need wide acceptance, and that's certainly still a weakness, I think, of all our projects, including mine in the expert communities. So for this, in this project, we, we create, we try to create success stories in real world research and technology development projects. We want to create convenient user interfaces and flexible com customization and targeted marketing. And of course, proper uh, project management, right? So we have multi-parties and we have like a pilot project running there. So we will bring in our, our expertise in really defining what outcomes are expected from the various participants and how then to evaluate these outcomes in, in a fair uh, process and then also offer a communication platform because sometimes in the actors, different players, whatever, a computer simulator and an experimental person need to get to some degree together even if they never met before on this platform. So these mechanisms will be provided and, and tested then, of course. The disruptive approach is then we have competitive parallelization of work for speed and quality. So you have a single objective, you have a work package in your project. It, 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 you try to define as well as possible um, what is expected to be delivered. Now, there's still some ambiguity on that one. So we will implement like gaming, staking, betting based mechanisms for trust. Like so if you, for example, I mean like, like let's say in the initial scenario in the genesis, right? Everybody would have like a reputation zero, let's say. That would be a good starting point. And how to decide who would kind of be contracted for delivering a certain amount of work, right? And you can do that like say, if I want to get that work packages, if I was an external one, I would say I give you whatever, one Bitcoin or a thousand dollars because I will make sure that this will be delivered properly. 
And if I don't do that, I lose the, the money. If I win, there's a certain factor that I get 2,000 in addition to the reward that was set out to deliver this project. Uh, and, and then uh, that way you could kind of bet on your own um, success of delivering these well-defined uh, work packages. And each work packages will then in this parallel approach, of course, be outsourced to different entities, right? Ideally independent entities. So several people carry out the same project. Now the point is, the real world is the following. If I want to, like if I have a linear traditional research project, that's what I do day in, day out, right? I need to, I have a certain task, especially if it's highly disciplinary, I usually have to employ them for the project and it usually takes me one or two years until these people are up to speed. Right, each of these employees cost me $100,000 a year, or euros or whatever, with, with all the, the side costs and so on. Right, so two years would be 200,000 euro, right? I bet I, I, I would know people I could flexibly support, like, like colleagues uh, from the scientific community who just can do that in a month, right? If I pay them, let's say 10,000 euro a month, and ask three of them to do that, it cost me 30,000 euro, right? And I'm there after one month because they all work in parallel. So time, uh, also speed is king, and even the cost, even if I, I, I very generously reward them for their delivery, right, I'm much, much quicker, right? And the, the good thing is if I have three people working in parallel, kind of they intrinsically evaluate each other, right? So some of them, let's say you, uh, you have to, to reach, if you have a diagnostic measurement, for example, you have to reach a certain limit of detection, right? I will see what they're doing and, and who gets the best limit of detection for whatever, detecting diabetes or, or cancer or something like that. So that's essentially um, engraved into how we run these projects. So this is then done for incentivization of global crowdsourcing. So evidently on the blockchain, we don't need to, uh, to nationally confine that. So if people can contribute their best in class expertise, time and facilities for real money that they can use for, for doing other stuff in their research. And uh, then to participate in a fair validation, assessment and arbitration process. So on the one hand, if you have three people working in parallel, they kind of automatically uh, self-evaluate between each other. You, get, you have a comparison. And then if that is not enough, you can also ask them or others to independently validate what has been done. The cryptonomic enablers are smart legal contracts uh, that manage bullet, in a bulletproof way the incentivization, so the remuneration, staking in IP, royalties and company, co-authorship, reputation and charity. Interestingly enough, one of the major investors is, is a, a law firm in Ireland, right? So we don't really have these, this blockchain crowd. Uh, we have that kind of through the back door, through Akasha. But the real investor, and that's a real problem, how do, how do you bulletproof the legal agreements that they would hold in a real court because we're talking about significant uh, monies that are going to be transferred in these uh, things. In a scientific project, of course, you can also uh, essentially uh, encode in smart contracts co-authorship, reputation, charity, and so on. That can all be done, and again, we have the help of a, of a legal team doing this. Then, of course, as many projects, we have a timestamp, unforgeable, immutable uh, ledger as a logbook for know-how and IP. Uh, that's very good. Actually, we're using that already to some extent in, in my lab. And then you have optional anonymity, uh, also tapping into what has been said before. Maybe the assessors of their colleagues don't want to be mentioned, right, like in name, because you don't want to meet them at the next conference like that, and then they tell you, why did you... Um, like like assess me so so poorly and so on you know and I'm your friend and so on to so to, to get rid of that um, we we of course have the the anonymity of of blockchain so uh, the elements are the crowdsourcing of technical elements and resources like brains competences hands skills and labor computing software infrastructure equipment materials processes and bio samples, clinical samples, and so on. That's usually what plays a big role. All of this plays a big role in the, in the highly interdisciplinary research I'm, I'm carrying out in my, my uh, everyday job, essentially. And then there's, uh, of course, there's a complex management where also the blockchain 
Uh, technologies can play a good role in business administration, smart and fast contracts, data storage, you know, confidential data, sharing these data. We have seen a couple of mechanisms. Uh, I've learned actually a lot uh, during this, the, the conference so far on this. Uh, what I could use, competitive parallelization of work, as I said, remuneration, reputation, staking, conflict resolution. We also have di certain elements in our project, uh, how this can be done, and there are mechanisms out there on the blockchain anonymity, intellectual property locked on a timestamped unforgeable ledger, communication, marketing, and scales. Um, so the enablers for involvement, the wide community is, I mean, you might ask yourself, what can I do, right? So I created a, a, um, a technology platform in my field, and I would encourage others then as a follow-up to do that, to define standards, interfaces, and procedures, how do you run experiments and so on, that is gonna be openly shared. It's kind of like a white book, right? So, so others will know what to do, and they don't have to start at ground zero you give them essentially the, the cooking recipes for doing certain things and you just have to do it. We uh, involve Fab Lab based prototyping and manufacture. So nowadays with 3D printing, Fab Labs and so on, a lot of people can be involved even for doing things, not only for coding, right? These are all out there. I think MIT has one, several universities have that where you either have free access or very cheap access just to create a couple of things you might need for these, these research projects. A software for design, simulation, and data. There are very interesting cloud uh, sourcing models and so on where that can be nowadays done and, and it doesn't cost a fortune anymore as it still does um, in, in, in some of the software platforms. So people can really get involved. Test and development kits, for example, we're using the Arduino platform, you know, for electronics development, something very cheaply bought on the net so people can really participate. You don't need a, a nuclear research center or so to do this, you can do that pretty much on, on the project that we conceive for being run here at home. Uh, and, um, and validation tools, of course, so you need to be able to assess what you're doing and, and characterize it and quantify it. We have a financial model and, and commercialization, so um, we will define a certain currency that's already in the make with, with our partners from Akasha, a need for a leader and workers to settle bills and salaries in, in, in regular fiat currency. I mentioned that already, provision of stable currency at least as option for remuneration. Like so research centers, if they give you some research equipment and so on, they need real currency to be reimbursed. I cannot talk them into accepting uh, cryptocurrency, transaction fees, tokens, ITOs, ICOs, these models have been discussed, and commercial exploitation will be that these two companies that we are partnering will, will, will create a, a designated spin-out company to essentially um, exploit these, um, the tool that they're creating, the software tool that they will then install at companies that are interested in that. And then licensing, customization, and full enterprise software will be the second step. So um, there will be real-world projects that we establish as a first case. So, so we kind of test bet this year in, 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 in defined project that we can then use as a success story to demonstrate essentially successful involvement of workers, bulletproofing of smart contracts. So we really issue this, and then we have several stages where we, we kind of release them to the public, starting from internal testing to full public uh, issuing after a uh, couple of rounds of improvement, user interfaces, uh, to create the first success stories for marketing. Exemplary projects we implemented, and one of them is the so-called lab on a disk, right, which is an open platform, essentially, that's how we conceive it, where you have something like a, looking like a CD player, running little disk, which are kind of advanced little diagnostic test strips, you know, they use for diabetes or testing. Okay, I don't have much more time. Oh, yeah, 10. 10. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, but Q&A is also, yeah, okay. And uh, then, of course, the outreach is important. I mean, this is all worth nothing, right, if, 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 if only the internal team uh, is going to only use it, right? So, so I will use my contacts in the field um, to, to, um, to increase, essentially, the involvement of communities. I'm already talking to several stakeholders. I'm trying to run sessions at, at, at least the, the conferences I'm attending and, and sometimes co-organizing. Um, so project partners of, of the project, which is called DLT for RTD, will take that over. Uh, sometimes this here is a little bit 
So uh, workers and suppliers, right, need to be involved. So those, uh, I mean, we don't want to do all these jobs ourselves. Even sometimes we could in these pilot projects. We really want others to do this to see how it collaborates, how, uh, what we need to coordinate all this crowdsourcing in this competitive parallelization model. Funders, investors, of course, uh, need to be involved, you know, that they know that this is a good way, our platform essentially, to, to, to launch very efficiently, like new startups or, or, or new ideas and, and, and convert them into reality and, and successes. As a forum for stakeholders, organizations like UNESCO, EU, NSA, that's an Irish uh, kind of standardization organization, they have actually a blockchain chapter where I'm a member of, you know, so it's, it's, it's important to then spread the news. Blockchain for science, so that's why I'm here, you know, to interact with you guys uh, who are more coming from the, the blockchain side, companies, suppliers, experts considering blockchain as a business model to involve them through consulting services and so on. Important is that we are also in a new age where a lot of things come together, right? So blockchain isn't the only thing, and I think there's great opportunity, for example, for making things. It's different than 20 years ago. People, as I said, have 3D printers, have certain opportunities, can lease access to local shops, workshops, and so on, to get involved in a much more active way than they used to be. Artificial intelligence, I think you covered that. It's, it's very evident, whatever. Self-generating layouts of computer chips of our, let's say, little lap on a disk or lap on a chip systems here. I'm working on that actually myself independently. Internet of Things, um, as we have seen, all these systems need data. We usually have a lot of bi uh, physical data, images, locations, and so on. But bi bio data is not as common because we all, like, usually that takes more or less taking a blood sample, a saliva sample, a teardrop sample, a urine sample, and that needs to be measured on site. And our technology essentially develops these decentralized point of use, point of care testing for health, for the environment, uh, uh, for food, uh, for, for industrial processes and so on. So th this, this, this will, the, the project itself kind of will, will supply, if you will, like a sensor that can be used by people to, on a massive scale, then provide this data in the internet of things and then feeding these uh, AI systems big data technologies in that sense, cloud-based IT resources, enormous outreach to even the general public in terms of computing, like currently I pay about 15,000 euro a year for the computer resources um, that I need to, 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 to run the science in my lab. Uh, this is now available for maybe 100 euro an, uh, um, a month on, on a massively paralyzed cloud-based um, uh, supercomputing systems and so on that you don't need to be subscribed to as an institution, even privately. Crowdfunding, of course, is a mechanism. E-health is a very big topic. I could give you another lecture on this here. Re redistributed manufacturing. So a lot of companies, a good friend of mine is uh, involved in that, uh, works in that, how to kind of democratize uh, fabrication, production of things and so on, also for tax reasons that's often required for political reasons. And the society, a lot of people, we, we, a lot of us will run out of work, right? We, we probably will not have enough time to, to give permanent employment of 40 hours a week or whatever it's in Germany uh, for doing that. So um, that will be a thing that people can still get involved, maybe run this as a hobby, as a side job and so on, if it can be done, especially uh, from a non-institutionalized um, work facility, home office or so, if it's, it's computing in the simplest case or a fab lab environment. So coming close to an end, the opportunity of this project is a similar enhancement of quality, speed, credibility, flexibility, and cost of complex research and technology development uh, projects for highly efficient uh, exploitation. There's a lot of challenges. These trusted oracles, right, the concept of uh, paralyzed, uh, competitive paralyzation uh, needs to be further developed here. That, that is something that, that we really have to, to test that essentially in the course of the project, the awareness and acceptance of the crypto economy and formation of critical mass in the research community. Again, there were former talks which uh, outlined the skepticism, even though I, I have much more positive feedback than I, I noticed a little bit in the previous talks. The volatility of cryptocurrencies is of course for, for a lot of people a problem. User expert convenience and availability 
of a web platform. Again, we have a designated partner who has done that day in, day out for the last couple of years very successfully as a company in other contexts, but also in, in context of blockchain. And individual elements of this project may well be represented as a standalone or outside the crypto economy. Of course, that's a common problem. So in summary, we have an objective uh, the software platform, so that every of complex uh, research product by novel DLT based uh, software platform. So that's essentially our product that the, um, the, the corporate partners want to then commercialize in the follow up of this project. The main issue is the trust at the real world interface. So how do you assess real world outcomes, uh, uh, physical measurement and so on in a fair way uh, to trigger reimbursement to people? The solution or the proposed solution is the crypto economically incentivized competitive federalization of this research and validation through best in class global crowdsourcing, right? And always have several people working on problems at the same time. And the enablers are staking, betting, and reputation schemes and the synergies with other disruptive technologies. Thank you very much. Questions? Sorry, I missed most of your uh, uh, presentation. I just came late. But um, you are a research institution. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and, and you're in collaboration with large companies or small companies, whatever companies, and commercializing this, right? If I were a company who has biodata to be put on a platform as you advertise, uh, would there be any conflict um, with other partners of yours? Um, or is this something that you're offering to the world to partner with you, um, given a certain set of biological yeah. data in an exclusive way? Yeah, um, there, there, there's different approaches, right? I mean, I had, like, this is a, like, like a mostly going to, hopefully going to be funded by, um, by the companies that I work with, but, but I also have a remit from the funding agency who gives like a third of the money, right? And in this year, what the objective is to create a software platform using uh, blockchain-based technologies in, in, in various aspects, right? The comp we, we mature that technology through running a, a pilot RTD project right, to test bed it and, and, and really test all the crowdsourcing. And then this platform is kind of the business model, the software platform that you can use for all kinds of different projects. And the company that would then not just sell the software, it's more like an SAP or so, that would always have to customize um, the software, the legal contracts and so on towards what, what, what the company who buys that software really wants to do. So if they have a data privacy ownership issue, that needs to be solved. Maybe also in, in including some technologies we have seen before, you know. But this particular project, I'm not saying that's the only option, it's just to, to create a software tool that will be like maybe like a, an SAP kind of improved that's SAP what I'm, for, well, for That's what companies. I'm trying to get at, actually, yeah. because uh, if I'm talking to SAP, um, I would be able to exclusively use their technology to put on my bio da data and that would be on an exclusive basis. So the question is, uh, the companies you're working with, you're not working with, uh, with these companies as investors or on, on an exclusive basis, but this is something for the kind of public, let's say public in terms of other companies such as mine, yeah. to plug in and use. No, I mean, the, the idea would be you have an idea completely different, like idea. you want to, whatever, create a new test tool for cancer Which or I something. do, by the yeah. way, yes, yeah. I yeah. do, that's why and I'm And then asking. the idea would be, can you, like the point why you would buy this software, right, not any bio data, that's all your stuff, right, you would buy this software because you, you want to have an efficient technology to crowdsource all this, so instead of employing 100 people, you would maybe just employ 10 people and outsource most of this here and, and, and therefore get a, a, a huge quality and speed enhancement compared okay, to I otherwise. Okay, I understand that. You know. but and then we would configure this to your needs, whatever you need on data privacy, data ownership, and so on. That, 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 that would be all configurable. So you would be willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement and not talk about the data that I, I want to put the, onto the blockchain, 
uh, and, and, and uh, one could do that in confidence without any other commercial partner of yours knowing about it. Yeah, but you, I mean, uh, then you could, whatever, the ocean protocol or what we talked here, it you know, could, that th is. could then be whatever added on to this package. Well, that's fine. That's what yeah, I want yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you are basically free to act and collaborate with whomever you want. Yeah, of course. Okay, that's my question. Thanks for answering. Thank you. Thank you.